takeover. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Paolo. And uh, once again, I'd like to uh, welcome all of you, our uh, partners uh, from the uh, Trump Media, uh, well, from the Quad Media, I should say. And uh, today, I'm uh, uh, to report uh, on the uh, uh, updates we, with regard to our uh, MD uh, Diamond Princess Cruise uh, departure. So, to uh, the Lucart City Operations Center, reported the three male repatriates from the MD Diamond Princess Cruise ship quarantined at the Lucart City NCC showed signs and symptoms of respiratory illness on February 26. These repatriates are now categorized as patients under investigation and have been transferred to a referral hospital for isolation and appropriate medical management. The cases are a 39-year-old who experienced cough and a 34 and 27-year-old who complained of throat discomfort. All are afebrile and two have tested negative. Additionally, we have just received information that there are two more repatriates who were brought to our facility because of sore throat. Their specimens were collected and sent for testing at the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine. And while we are still waiting for the other test results, we assure the public that our referral hospitals are well equipped and prepared to handle COVID-19 cases once they arise. Our health response team at the quarantine facility is being extra cautious to prevent further health risks. Now moving on to updates on uh, PUIs uh, outside of the NCC uh, temporary quarantine facility. And uh, we report as of 12 uh, noon today that there are now only 30 patients under investigation or PUIs admitted in various health facilities. A total of 585 patients have already been discharged. To date, 531 PUIs have tested negative for the 2019 novel coronavirus and 40 cases with pending test results. We are observing a steady decrease in the number of PUIs admitted in our health facilities and DOH is bent on sustaining this downward trend. While there is a looming prospect of positive COVID-19 cases among our repatriated Kababayans, we call on everyone to continue to be vigilant partners of DOH in keeping the threat of COVID-19 at bay. For the global situation, it has been reported uh, by the DOH that as of February 27, there are a total of 85 confirmed COV or COVID-19 cases among overseas Filipinos or OFs around the globe. Japan recorded the most OFs with a total of 80, 70 admitted, 10 discharged, followed by UAE and Hong Kong with two cases each, and Singapore with one case. The most recent case was a 29-year-old Filipina who was admitted to a health facility in Hong Kong. The patient is currently in stable condition. COVID-19 continuously affects our Kababayans overseas. The Philippine government remains at their service and would devotedly extend our assistance wherever they are in the world. The World Health Organization reported that the COVID-19 has spread in 37 countries outside of China, but has observed a decline in number of additional cases globally. WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus particularly noted that nine countries, including the Philippines, reported no new cases of COVID-19 
for more than two weeks. And while the DOH welcomes this positive development, we cannot be complacent. We must remain steadfast in watching out for the health of the Filipino people, particularly our repatriates in the new Clark City temporary quarantine facility. So I would like to conclude uh, my uh, press uh, statement and we are now open for questions yes. from the uh, floor. Just a reminder to please limit your questions to those related to the COVID-19 health event and also um, raise your hand first and wait to be acknowledged before asking your question. So let's start with the lady in maroon, please. Secretary, is it possible to set up a mini medical isolation facility inside New Clark City since the exposure or the interaction of those who are um, suspected of COVID-19 cases may also um, give threat to those who are asymptomatic? Since although there are five chosen hospitals for the isolation, but is it possible to set up a mini or isolation medical facility inside New Clark City po? Uh, there has been no recommendation to that effect because remember when we set up our uh, temporary quarantine facility the Bureau of Quarantine uh, officials had been uh, uh, the ones who helped in the setting up of the uh, quarantine facility so mas mabilis kasi Diretso na. Meron na tayong ambulance kesa you let them stay there in that uh, small medical facility. Remember, the NCC has a uh, polyclinic. But if we put them there, what for? When we can already bring them straight to the uh, isolation rooms of our facilities. Then, given that there is a possibility of pandemic, do we have enough medical workers to augment? Given na meron pong medical workers in different countries po, and then ma paano po yung ratio ng medical workers to attend to patients under investigation? The pandemic uh, scenario is far off. Remember that uh, the countries that have been uh, affected by the COVID-19 uh, are uh, numbering about 37, okay? And how many countries are there in the world? We have 195 countries. I don't think the threshold has been uh, reached to say that a uh, pandemic is uh, nearly uh, uh, happening because I don't think it should even be entertained at this point. Okay, so far what we can say is we have a decreasing PUIs, only 30, an increasing number of negatives, and hopefully that trend continues. So far, the way it is, our uh, preparedness, uh, readiness are uh, adequate. Last on my part, po, on medical supplies, given the coordination with DTI, do we already have enough supplies po, for masks? That uh, we have the commitment by uh, the DTI that the manufacturing company in uh, Bataan Export Processing Zone has committed 200,000 masks a week for the DOH. So this is now being processed. 200,000 a week. 200,000. Thank you, Secretary. Hi, Sec. Uh, good afternoon. Yung repatriates lang po natin, uh, in Japan, merong sampu na gumaling na. Ang, ang update ho ba ay... 8 out of 10 nito ay nakabalik na ng Pilipinas and uh, ika-quarantine din ho ba sila? Uh, I am told that uh, they are back in the Philippines and since they have been tested negative following uh, the uh, Japan uh, protocol uh, I believe that they need not be quarantined but however they have to be monitored closely uh, by our local uh, epidemiology uh, surveillance uh, officers. 
Pero may advice ba tayo dito sa walo na ito na wag muna silang humalubilo sa public given that uh, there are instances na uh, worldwide merong report na uh, resurgence ng ng disease? The resurgence is not clear to me. Uh, that might be speculative, but uh, it's not clear to us. Uh, the, the question perhaps is, once you were tested positive, and then you got well, and then tested negative, and therefore you were allowed or you were discharged, will there be a possibility that you will recontract the virus? Parang ganun yata yung, yung context ba? Pwede mo bang makuha ulit? Number one, the COVID-19 is a novel coronavirus. We still don't know much about it in terms of the antibodies that it stimulates to be produced by the individual. There are studies by and large about coronaviruses in general, not specifically COVID-19. So, yung coronavirus in general, and if I recall the text message to me by RITM Executive Director uh, Celia Carlos, para 8 to 16 months, meron ka antibodies, after which it will start to wane. Uh, yun lang yung information that I can tell you. Se, last na lang on my end. Yung sa mga Koreans natin sa Cebu, uh, Tama ho ba yung, yung procedure na ginagawa ng, ng local uh, DOH natin doon na, na sinesegregated lang sila sa mga hotel rooms nila? Or pin, nakauwi na ho ba itong mga Koreans? Anong update po natin doon? Yeah, yung sa Cebu, sir, uh, ito po ay uh, kinoordinate ng regional office natin through uh, with our local government units and all of these uh, travelers or foreigners were advised to stay in their hotels for quarantine. Uh, but some of them uh, opted to just leave the country. But uh, meron pa rin hong nandun na uh, naka-quarantine pa rin dun sa mga hotels nila. And this is being monitored by our local government there in Cebu. Uh, wala pa kaming exact information as to the number. But uh, what we know of is initially there were 26 of these foreigners or Koreans who arrived in Cebu and went to two places in Cebu. So, nahati yung 26 na yon into these two places in Cebu. Hello po, Sec. Sec, are we considering po na mag-impose po ng travel restrictions sa Japan? And yung second question ko po, uh, matutuloy po ba yung Philippine Mall sale po on Sunday? Yun po. <laughs> Thank you po. Punta ka? Pwede rin, Sec. <laughs> Punta kayo? Uh, oh, tamo, nawala na tuloy sa isip yung unang tanong mo. Well, the, the Japan, uh, any recommendation or proposal to include Japan uh, for a possible selective or absolute ban is uh, up for the task force to consider. Uh, pending, of course, the submission by DOH of the uh, risk assessment. The risk assessment that we do has uh, four health aspects about four criteria. Number one, is there a local transmission in the country that is uh, proposed to be included in the ban? Number two, the volume of travelers. Is the volume more than 100,000? Because if it is more than 100,000, that's going to be uh, presenting high risk. Sabi, kung maraming narating, ano? Okay. Then number three, I think, is... Uh, <clears throat> yung context, fragility, and threat or environment based on the international health uh, regulations. So, kailangan din itong uh, uh, isama doon sa criteria tapos yung health expenditure uh, per capita as uh, PUI. No? So, if it is more than 50,000 pesos per capita, mataas yun, no? 
So that is one of the criteria. And then of course the travel, you know, sinabi natin volume of travelers kung uh, color coded kasi kung green less than 50,000, kung moderate yellow 50,000 to 99,999 travelers. High is red more than 100,000 as I have said. Okay, tapos entry restrictions of territory from individuals coming from China. So yung bang mga countries, alimbawa Japan o South Korea, meron ba sila full restrictions to persons or travelers coming from China? Kasi kung wala, tataas yung risk natin. Follow? Naintindihan ba natin yun? Kung hindi sila nagre-restrict. In other words, kung tayo, di ba, nag-travel ban tayo sa China. Eh yung iba, kung hindi nag-travel ban sa China. So pasukan din yung mga travelers and, and persons from China into those territories into those countries. Eh, ang tanong dyan, nakakatakot siya tayo. Parang medyo may risk sa atin yun. Okay? So, uh, meron full restrictions, green, limited restrictions, yellow, no restrictions, red. So, ito yung amin ulit ipapakita sa task force para objective yung atin uh, basis for deciding as a task force which countries will be upon which we will impose a uh, ban whether selective or uh, total sir yung mall <laughs> yung mall may inap kasi uh, i was told by uh ano ba ito mall wide sale yes po until march 31 march 31 uh hmm. Yeah, our advisory remains, no? Uh, if uh, it can be helped, we discourage people from going to uh, places where there is quite a volume of uh, people uh, just to uh, make sure that uh, no increased risks uh, is... Uh, uh, going to uh, confront our uh, people, no? So we don't encourage it. Now, if it will be continued, we just again consistent with our advisory. The disinfection uh, procedures must be followed. The availability of uh, disinfectants must be there uh, provided by the mall management and better still if uh, the guards uh, or whoever is designated to do a thermal uh, gun on every uh, everyone who enters the mall so yun ang mga conditions that will more or less reduce the risk. Yeah. Sir, just a clarification on uh, the suspected, uh, the, the PUIs in, in uh, New Clark City, sir. Um, you mentioned that there are two bago. Um, can we clarify this? If, if this is, if it turn out to be positive, would this be considered a local transmission? Or uh, will the case still be con uh, considered a foreign, ano, foreign acquired? Yeah, uh, remember the origin or the derivation uh, of the repatriates is the ship, the MV uh, Diamond Princess Cruise, which was quarantined in, uh, in uh, the port of Yokohama. The ship was docked there. So I believe this has to be uh, considered as an important case. So that is, it's not going to be categorized as a local transmission should uh, there be any one of the tests that will yield positive. Sir, currently we're, we are in code blue, correct? Uh, that's right. Okay. Um, that, that's no local transmission. No local transmission. Uh -huh. can, we, can we just ex uh, parang, uh, illustrate what code blue is and how different is it from code red? Because we understand pag code red basar tama, 
na pag nagpakita ka lang ng symptoms, you will be immediately considered as a PUI or suspect case. Yes. Um, the difference the difference between our code blue and code red would basically be first, kasi ang code blue natin, wala pa tayong local transmission. And when we have our local transmission, we'll definite shift, definitely shift to code red. Now, with regards to response, for code blue, we are just we just have heightened surveillance, and we do our tracing of contacts, and we do our uh, guarding uh, identification and uh, of these uh, cases, no or trace tracing cases uh, by uh, uh, across the ports that we have. But when we go to our uh, code red. We already shift to this strategy whereby we do not really trace our contacts anymore, but we manage the cases already. So this would be very different because the capacity of our healthcare system, especially our facilities which provide services, should be heightened at this point because we are already we already have shifted to this managing of cases. Last question. Uh, in the code blue. Uh, there are three essential uh, measures, okay? Quarantine, which is what we are doing, okay? Uh, whether you are a person under monitoring or patients under investigation, okay? Nangyayari na yan. Next would be contact tracing. Uh, tracing the whereabouts of people who might have been exposed, as we did for the first three Chinese nationals. And then, you know, the uh, case management, clinical uh, case management uh, of PUIs and testing of uh, PUIs. No? So, kasama yan sa Code Blue, pati yung mga measures in Code White, kasama din yan sa Code Blue. Pero yung Code Red, this is the one, meron ka ng epidemic surge, local transmission, so yan na yung pati LGUs ay kasama na. Yung kanilang barangay emergency health response systems are already activated. Okay? Right now, as we talk, inihanda na rin po nila yan just in case. No? Na meron na silang... Uh, kasi the president and I met with the local chief executives two Mondays ago. And there, it was very clear. We told them this is the list of uh, deliverables uh, and measures that the local government units ought to prepare. Uh, so, of course, the levels two and three hospitals of uh, the LGUs must also be prepared. Uh, last question, sir. Can we get an update, sir? We understand that uh, among the topics that we're discussing the IATF was the possibility of repatriation of Filipinos from Macau. Um, has the IATF decided on that? Yes. Uh, yesterday po, nag-meet po yung as uh, instructed by our high-level uh, interagency task force, task force membership, nag-meet yung technical working group ng interagency task force kung saan isa to sa agenda. So pinag-uusapan ngayon kung ilan talaga ang may intention at nagre-request coming from Macau na mga kababayan natin para makauwi dito sa Pilipinas. Pinag-usapan din kahapon dun sa technical working group kung anong means of uh, or what type of carrier, no? Kung sila ba ay sa barko o kung ito ay magiging eroplano para iuwi sila dito sa Pilipinas. Also, pinag-usapan din, of course, yung logistical requirements kapag sila ay umuwi at ano yung magiging proseso. So, everything has been uh, parabang nabuo na and it will be recommended to our high level officials for our IATF meeting uh, this coming week and siguro pagkatapos nun makakapagbigay na tayo ng decision. Last five questions. Uh, ko, last 50 questions. <laughs> with WHO. Sir, yung dun po sa tatlong repatriates na naunang dinala sa JB Lingad, um, bakit po natatagalan yung resulta nung isa? Well, uh, the RITM has to be sure about the test results, okay? So, we leave it at that. Uh, I don't know the operational details, uh, but I would like to believe that the RITM knows best uh, what it is doing. So, baka naman lumabas mamaya. Tignan natin. 
Tapos yung dalawa po, um, kailan po sila dinala sa ospital? Yung dalawang nadagdag? Kanina lang daw. O, oh, yun. Kanina lang daw. Kanina lang uh, po. Tapos po, dun, uh, clarify ko lang sec, dun sa sampo na gumaling na sa Japan, lahat po ba sila nandito na? Walo lang nga, andito. Walo lang po. Oh. Tapos po, um, dun... Isa yata, nagpunta ng Singapore. Yung isa, I don't know. Ah, sa, 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 sa Japan pa yung isa. Okay. The gentleman... Tap Ay, back, class na please. po. Sorry. Related lang po. Yung sa repatriation team po, wala naman pong nagpapakita ng sintomas sa NCC. Andun ba rin sila sa NCC? Oh, wala naman mga... pong symptoms, sec. Wala naman? Wala. Oo. Of, of course, ito lang nga. Ito. Ah, yung una, yung sa Wuhan? Uh, hindi po. Yung repatriation team po na members ng repatriation team. Ah, wala. Team wala naman. Na Oo, naman. wala naman. Mukhang uh, they're all protected uh, and adequately Uh, wearing their PPEs. Okay, thank you. Hi, Sek. Um, on the situation lang po of, the, of overseas Philippine workers in Korea, we've seen um, appeals uh, from the OFWs na mag-provide daw po sana yung Philippine Embassy ng masks for them kasi yung presyo ay eh, medyo tumataas na daw. Is this a matter that the IATF has been considered? Well, uh, we can raise it uh, to the IATF, but again, our policy is if you're not sick, don't wear a mask. Uh, otherwise, you might contribute to the acute uh, shortage uh, of these PPEs, which should prioritize the healthcare workers, frontliners in provision of care to patients. So, wag na, wag na po. Dapat siguro yun ang maitindihan din nila. Sir, also, meron din daw pong mga um, gusto na daw pong magparipatriate from Korea. Are we considering this? And if so, saan po sila dadalin? Because we have 500. Also, with Macau din po, kung magrepatriate mag from Macau and Korea, if and when, saan po sila dadalin? Kasi ba we have 500 in NCC. Our decision tool is such that if this Rip, uh, OFs who wish to be repatriated are coming from uh, countries such as Macau and uh, and now of course you were saying South Korea uh, select areas of South Korea uh, and they show no symptoms they will undergo home quarantine so they will just be persons under monitoring uh, and uh, in home quarantine Thank you, sir. All right, last question. Gentleman in gray, please. Ganda nga po. Uh, Secretary, considering po na may mga PUI o PUM po na nakitaan po ng sintomas ng COVID sa NCC, may pagbabago po ba ng protocol o kaya guidelines po natin? Wala. Ganun din naman yun. Dahil nung unang Wuhan na uh, repatriates natin, nagkaroon tayo ng dalawa, nagkaroon ng diarrhea, nagkaroon ng isa, nagkaroon ng fever, uh, lahat dinala for testing. So, pretty much still the same. No change in our protocols and in our guidelines. Lastly po, may mga PUI na ngayon pagka tinest, turned negative. Pero pagka nagkaroon ulit sa idinaan sa test, nagpositive. Ano pong explanation po dito? May mga ganun po kasing mga cases na Uh, dinaan siya sa test, negative, but later on, nag-positive siya pagka idinaan uli siya sa test. Ano pong mga paliwanag po dito? Ang posibleng paliwanag dyan ay muna iugnay natin ito doon sa MV Diamond Princess Cruise. Nagkaroon kasi, tandaan ninyo, ang quarantine protocol doon sa barko mismo ang Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare nagsabi nagkaroon ng uh, laps or lapses. Lumabas siya eh, in in the media. The no less than their Minister of Health, uh, Katsunobu Kato, said he was in fact apologetic that the uh, breach in the uh, quarantine protocols was uh, inadvertently uh, committed in that ship. Oh, so, ano ibig sabihin nun? Una nilang kinuarantine na mukhang effective, I don't know, I can't be sure, yung mga pasahero. Tapos sumunod yung crew. Yung crew naman, 
Pinabayaan nila. Na makihalubi, no? Because, you know, they needed to serve food daw. They needed to clean. They need to go around. So, they were also being exposed. In that scenario, you have what is clearly understood as a sliding exposure. The exposure is uh, uh, sliding. The nature of exposure is sliding. In other words, hindi naman lahat sila na-expose at the same time. May na-expose on day one. Okay? May na-expose on day two. May na-expose on day three, four, hanggang 14 days. Di ba? Naandun sila. So, ang tawag ko sliding exposure. So, pwede, sa una, negative, tapos, eventually, naging positive. Okay? Pagka naging positive, they become PUIs. PUIs, Nadala na po yung 80 sa Japanese facilities, hospitals for uh, appropriate care. Tapos naging negative na. Yung iba, sampo, naging negative na. Oh, sige, tama na ito. Okay. Alright, uh, last question uh, from, from the lady. Sek, ang follow-up lang po sa binanggit nyo kanina na if ever po na pag -re tayo from Macau and uh, part of Korea, South Korea, hindi na po sila iha-quarantine sa MCC. Home quarantine na lang. Bakit po? Uh, wala naman silang unang-una, uh, wala naman silang symptoms. Uh, so, uh, ang mangyayari niyan, uh, siguro baka mas maganda na si uh, Asek Vergeri na lang sumagot nito. Okay, yeah, ma'am. Uh, yung lagi po nating pinapaliwanag, no? Ito pong kaso natin with our repatriates coming from MV Diamond Princess is a special situation. Kasi ang sabi nga po natin, ang pinanggalingan ng ating mga kababayan galing po sa barko na ito ay napakas, uh, kakaiba po dun sa iba nating ginawa like with Wuhan because yung transmission dynamics po nila doon sa barko ay kakaiba. It's a contained uh, contained place tapos po yung circumstances nila doon hindi naman po natin masyadong alam. Pangatlo po, yung ang sinasabi kanina ng secretary, yung sliding days of exposure ng ating mga kababayan doon. So, ang gobyerno deemed it best na pagbalik nila dito, i-quarantine natin sa isang facility at para mabantayan natin sila ng husto. As compared with this kababayan, if ever, if and when we will be bringing them home from from Macau from South Korea, hindi po ganitong sitwasyon ang pinanggagalingan nila. Kaya po ngayon, pag dumating sila dito, kung sakasakali, we will just consider them as person under in, uh, under monitoring and then home-based quarantine, but this would be monitored strictly as well. That ends our briefing for today. Thank you so much for coming and we'll see you again next week.